Previously on our Lost Age adventures, we made it to the depths of Aqua Rock, exploring it as much as we could, and maybe getting on one or two Pikmin related tangents along the way. Now, for those of you who missed the previous episode, I have good and bad news. The good news, we got Parch, the synergy that we're supposed to get from Aqua's Rock. The bad news, despite that, we were not able to do all the item checks within Aqua's Rock, because there is one teensy obstacle. Apparently, in this dungeon, you use a key item that you get within the dungeon. I completely forgot about this until you guessed it. It wasn't there for the randomizer. Hopefully I remember to go back all the way to the inner depths of Aqua Rock whenever I get this item, but that's a problem for future Jackie King. For now, it was time to fulfill a promise I made on the previous stream of starting the next stream with some forging and finally clear out the forgeable items clogging up our inventory. Uh, that is as soon as I remember how the heck to actually get to the town. Cause the simplest way of just flying in from the beach side is kind of blocked off to us until we get the ability to fly in a boat. So take your bets now of how long it'll take to actually get to the town that I want to do the forging in. In the meantime, enjoy me trying to justify the lore of Golden Sun to random people in the chat while playing a video game, which is apparently harder than you would think. Maybe it's just that it's hard for me to talk in general. How do I do magic in real life? Well, funny thing, the world, the synergy in Golden Sun is, we call it, some people would call it magic just to simplify things, but technically synergy is not magic, it's alchemy. It's kind of like all scooched in into the prologue and you kind of occasionally hear it in other parts of the story. So it's easy to miss out on the details, but essentially, like, it's kind of a... If we want to get into the details of what makes synergy synergy, it's, it's completely... It only exists because of alchemy in this game's world. It's just, I've always described it as, like, a blend between psychic powers and what the Avatar people go through. Because it comes from the people themselves, but it also was... The whole alchemy system kind of is responsible for it somehow. Don't mind me while I just completely forget which is where the map button is. And I try to figure out. Okay, okay, okay. I think I can see now. I should try from this shoreline. Listen, alchemy converts something into another thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Apparently, our real world logic doesn't translate one to one into however the heck the logic in Golden Sun works. Because in this world, alchemy is alchemy. So unless they convert memories into powers, this game not gonna totally disagree with you. I think the short answer is that the ma that is magic. It can no. That it's closer to psychic powers than actual magic, though. Who knows how actual magic works in? in the world. Like, you see it, I'm not too familiar with the Midwestern, or why am I even blanking out on the area? I'm blanking out on the Lord of the Rings and that sort of stuff, stuff where it's where it comes from, or where it's originized, or popularized. So I don't even know how magic really works in the general scheme of things. Anyways, Sunshine is here. Well, look at that, you got some raw materials. Now, I'm Now, with all the equipment that we've been getting... I don't really care too much. Oh! Cool, they updated the randomizer so that it's instantaneous. Holy cow, that's a lot of money. Hopefully I still have some money to do these, the rest of this forging stuff. Fun fact, I played 
Los H first, spend months trying to unlock the other side of the world. Also, they get trying to get this set needs codes. Yeah, like technically, if you're just being the game, you don't need anything to you don't need transfer data, which is what the codes are for. However, if you want. For a lot of people, collecting gins is a big part of the game, and you can't get all of those without transferring data from Golden Sun One, and you miss out on a lot of stuff. So it's kind of it's kind of a weird vacuum of technically not required, but might as well be. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine how that would be quite a bit of a mystery if you grew up with Golden Sun. Grew up with Lost Age first and had no idea how Golden Sun 1 worked. God, I don't remember the forging stuff being so darn expensive. I just wanted to get this stuff forged and get it out of my inventory. Alright, it just picks up the inventory. Well, at least we have this place on the map, so we can come back here after... Oh, or we could just go to this shop. And do our shop. Do our selling there. Yeah, I can't think of one person that actually likes the Dark Dawn ending. For me, that... That ending was the one moment... Was the one thing that kind of killed the entire game for me. It's definitely the worst part of that entire game, in my opinion. It doesn't help that, like, sure, there was some open end, there was some thing, there were some mysteries still left from Lost Age, but everything that you really cared about was close and complete in Lost Lost Age, and then Dark Dawn just ripped it all open and left it on a cliffhanger. I'm kind of indifferent to fighting Alex at this point. I've kind of just accepted that he's going to be that one thing that's always out of people's reach. Maybe if they were leading up to something in the, fo in the fourth game, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just like... There's way there's way too much build up to him, but if we were to ever fight him, it pro I'm kind of kind of I don't know if fear is the word I want to use, but I do feel like it could never live up to the hype because it's been built up for so long throughout the entire course of the history, and like part of his quote unquote charm is just the way that he's always the quote unquote mastermind behind the scenes pulling all the strings. I'm not sure if I would actually want to fight him myself because it kind of takes away from that whole whole side of his character. But I definitely get how s most people would find that annoying. Especially because it feels like it's teased especially in Dark Dawn with him actually making the initial move against the party at times. <laughs> That's a funny comment. Alex's story has been built up for so long, people who care about him died of old age. The end. <laughs> Basically that. Maybe if I, like... Why? Oh, I was trying to move the elixirs from Jenna to Jenna. No wonder it, that didn't work. I don't use them that much. I don't get stats that frequently. There's definitely... This is the problem with the inventory... Well, it's not the problem with the inventory system, but it's a issue that comes up from the problem with the inventory system. There is benefits to actually having the same item on multiple party members because only the party members that are... that have the items can use them. So, there's strategic benefit to having them spread out, especially revival things like Water of Lives. But then you have the limited inventory. I, I don't even think... I think 30... If it wasn't for the fact that equipment 
and synergy items also take up that inventory. I don't think dirty per party member would be as bad as it seems, but the equipment, especially all the different types of equipment you have in this game, just... Hold on, let me do the combination. So you get a really good grasp on just how much of our inventory is taken up by either equipment or key items. Like Felix has less than a third of his inventory when you take away all the stuff that's equipped. Same with Jenna, Piers, everyone has like over a third of their inventory taken up by that sort of stuff. Um, what was I? Yeah, I was tr trying to clean up my inventory. That's what I was doing. Honestly, herbs are so weak. I should just sell them, but until they're an issue, I can probably just throw them all on one party member. Anyway, so this is quite a bit better. This is like 10 slots with between everyone. And this will be good into our next randomizer excursion anyways. More importantly, let's see if we can actually rebuy some affordable stuff. Actually, when I think more about it, the affordable items are just probably gonna replace the stuff. It's a good thing I'm not actually buying anything because our inventory is gonna be a mess all over again once we actually get all this forging done. Alright, what do I have still? Let's start with the tear stones. Can you get cursed items from... It's been so long since I've gotten this far into Lost Age. But I don't remember actually being able to forge equipment that can curse you. Ground I- oh, Dark Matter. I mean, it's Dark Matter, that does make sense. Well, I'll inventory again, but I bet you that as soon as we equip some of this stuff, we'll have enough money to bot buy that back. Especially if I actually sell some of the forgeable items that I haven't, well, you know, forged. Ah, screw it. I'll, I'm gonna just... Oh, this will definitely cover me. And you're right, I could sell herbs. I just don't... I don't think I... I just don't think I have enough to actually justify it. Or, like, give me enough money in of itself. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but at this point... The herbs and elixirs aren't really bothering me because they're all on one party member. And I don't... Well, I guess they're, they, the elixirs sell for a little bit more than I thought. Yeah, I'll screw it. I don't... I was holding on to them because I wasn't sure if I had a depth that actually knew, like, cure poison or... Restore... But well, that did push me up a lot more than I thought it would. And you seem to advance quite well without using them. <laughs> Fair. Sorry, I got distracted with your que question, Avi, but that's kind of what Donjin is. It's, n it's not perfect, but. It's not a completely new game, but it's probably the best I can do with the tools that I have access to, like the editor and the like. Someday that new version of Donjin will come out, and that'll be a new day in of itself. Alright, get, get that processed. Okay, I probably don't have enough for that. I probably should have sold that one and tried to forge the other thing, but hindsight 2020, I can at least hope that that, that item will sell for quite a bit 
when I actually get around to getting it back. But we get, they get quite a bit out of that whole exchange, and it doesn't look like the forgeable items are randomized. They're good items regardless, so I'm not too worried, but... The important thing is that we have this as a fast travel point now. So we can come back here whenever we need to unload our inventory or have money to burn. In the meantime... I think the best thing we can do... Oh, I was gonna say the best thing we can do right now is take care of the red scarf, but... I'm pretty sure that's tied behind the bird that we need carry for. I discovered that the hard way in a past stream. Well, I guess you I guess you know what that means. It, or at least I know what it means. It's time to actually go to Tundra Tower. I don't know why, because Ice Worlds are usually pretty infamous in video games. But this is one of those dungeons I was really looking forward to quite a bit. I just, I, I think a part of it is that it does a good job with the whole ice physics thing because it'll, because the move, allows you get new mileage out of the move synergy that you don't get to see anywhere else in the game. Oh, I'm a little lot further south than usual. Yeah, you seem to have similar sentiment to me, rewrite. Because in video games, ice usually annoys the player and disturbs normal gameplay. I guess it also helps that I'm kind of a fan of... The... They can get too... They can get tricky. They can get so tricky that they're frustrating at times, but overall I kind of like the ice sliding puzzles in Pokemon games. Kind of, probably because in those cases they feel they're actually puzzles and not just pure gameplay changes. And you do some interesting things to solve those puzzles that don't normally exist elsewhere. That too, I... Area-wise, not too much really changes. The most exciting difference with the ice, as we'll see in this dungeon, is how it affects the puzzles. And you know what? I'll probably get- it'll probably be like Aqua's Rock, where I get so tired of the battles that I turn the void back on eventually. But it's good to turn it off every now and then, just to assure you don't get too under level, I suppose. Plus, it's been so long since I've been this far into the game that all these enemies are going to be new to me, so it'll be interesting and exciting to see the faces. Right, I, I think you're right. I think there might have been an overworld gen in this area, and we have a good way to double check that. Just let me pull up the good old strategy guy. Yep. Weez is normally around here somewhere. Can't exactly make out what patch of ice it is from here, but I'm sure I'll recognize it when I see it. I might be jumping the gun and need to go a little further up ahead. Well, in the vanilla game, it's the Jupiter Ginny Lee's. For this randomizer, who knows? Oh, how about something more objectively cool? And not as disturbing. Wait, when did it turn from back to plan diver? <laughs> I guess when I click I guess when I click liquid fire. Cool. Suddenly, I'm sort of regretting selling all my antidotes. I have the means to poison enemies, but I don't have the means to unpoison. It's okay, I have a plan. Step one. 
get this dungeon on the world map. Confirm that it's on the world map. Step 2. Take advantage of our randomizer exclusive retreat options to go to a town. Preferably one that I could get feedback easily to on the boat, but it doesn't really matter. War to it. Buy antidotes. If not, just get it taken care of from the sake of Probably both. And then we go back with little to no progress loss. Of course I go to the one town that doesn't actually sell antidotes. Surely Alfreda has antidotes. It's, there's, it's like two bosses into the game. Surely it has it. It also probably has a healer in a much easier to find area. This is probably the first I've gone into the Golden Sun game without having access to gear poison and just having no need for antidotes whatsoever. I guess there was worse situations that we could have learned that. Like, I can imagine learning in, a, in the middle of an area that we couldn't just fast travel back to where we left off. Um, I'm gonna just be on the safe side and buy 10 of them. Maybe I should just uh, heal at the end while we're all the way out here, but that takes too long. We get our synergy back relatively quickly. This works just as well in my humble opinion. So first we gotta find that gin, and then we can get, get to do the fun dungeon. So really all the way out here? It must, because I can't really think of much of a better purpose to actually have that entire back area. Oh, I must have clicked Plant Diver when I was trying to go for Liquid Fire. Yeah, I remember the- it looked like the mountains are on the left side, so it might be like somewhere around here... This looks pretty close. I think this is the area. Here we go. And sure enough, it was neither Mercury nor Wind. Thanks, Randomizer. To be fair, I think Venus is one of the elements that we have the least of. I'll have to double check that. So I'll take it, nevertheless. Mm. Yeah, let's go for the sleep because. Jenny's can run. Some, I spend so much time with Dawn Jin, I have to remind myself that every now and then. <laughs> I mean, we could kill it with fire, or we could just turn one, we could just round one, shot it. Ah, god. I mean, I'm so off today, I can't find the words for anything. Geode. Naturally, wind is actually what we need most of at the moment. Strike with a clod of earth. Oh, this is good. We got a no new set of classes at hand. No revive, unfortunately, but we have access to Shurukin. Perfect for <laughs> a shaman class. Sure, the best physical attacking synergy. One of, at least, in the game. On a class that does not have any physical attack. I mean, I, I'm not sure how much this randomizer work, worth, but I guess that's actually a pretty good attack. But if I can get on someone that's already more of a physical powerhouse, that might be better. I think I like it slightly... pretty much gives me the same thing that Felix had, and I think I like it slightly better on him. Alright, I guess that's as good as we're gonna get. Maybe I got a little too carried away. It's fine. We get synergy back. As long as I don't use Felix's synergy, we shouldn't run into an issue like we had in... The Ruins. 
now you play like this. And that reminds me, like, part of the reason why this was a childhood favorite of mine was because of how much I liked the clap. Or Lost Age in particular. Lost Age is weird, like, back when I frequently played it, way too long ago, it was my favorite of the three. Though overspending more time with Golden Sun 1, mostly with working on Dawn Jin and similar projects, Golden Sun 1 kind of became more of my favorite. But I think part of the reason why I was so drawn to the second game more was just because of how much more in-depth the battle system is, but it's the sequel. Of course there would be more to do in the battles. Golden Sun 1 has better mobs. Uh, interesting statement, re re -white. Yeah. re One has better mobs, two has better skills and summons. Now you got me curious to like look back into all the encounters in Golden Sun One because I don't, I can't say that you're right or wrong or wrong. Three has nostalgia, which is kind of funny for third entry, but. I kind of get it. Like, I definitely feel three is the weakest of the of the trilogy. But at the end, for me, at the end of the day, it's still more Golden Sun. And my minus a few things like the points of no return, I kind of feel like the things hated about three get exaggerated slightly. And worse, like a lot, of, I feel like a lot of three flaws are actually things that flaws that already existed in the previous two games, but just become more apparent because more time has passed. There's definitely three exclusive problems, like the no points of return genies. You could, if you try hard enough, you could argue that the no points of return for genie thing it got from Golden Sun One. But that's kind of it's kind of a stretch. It's mostly just like there is one situation where you can miss out on a gym for a long time, and that's the now, now, now. I know it sucks that we're ending things off right before getting into the juicy Golden Sun tangents, but this dungeon goes on for quite a bit, mostly due to my own incompetence. But still, I feel we're better off exploring this place in the next episode. So next time in our Lost Age Randomizer Adventures, we'll take on what is probably my favorite dungeon in this entire game. And don't worry, I'll get into why that is after we finish up the other tangents I started this episode. Until then, take care.